captivity right now. Even though we free to move around and do like this, like we doing, but we still under, we on the bottom. Yeah, Our Lord, the Savior, who we talked about, he's gonna come back. He gonna set up a righteous rulership on the earth, and it's gonna be perfect then. And we gonna be perfect. We gonna live forever. What do you think he's gonna come back? Well, pursuant to the scriptures, he's gonna end World War Three. Or when World War Three hits, he's gonna come back then because nuclear missiles gonna come here and destroy this place. That's why we out here preaching. We're trying to warn, warn our people to get ready to turn back to the Lord before it's too late because this place is doomed. If you ever felt your spirit, we feel it right now. Like, 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 like. But we're trying to compare this, brother. Go to Malachi, bro. Four. Listen to this. The nuclear destruction is on the way. It's going to come at an appointed date. Go ahead. Malachi 4 and 1. Yep. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. You heard that? The day is going to come, it's going to burn as an oven. What else? And all the proud, yeah, all that do wicked shall be a stubble. All the proud and all that do wickedly go against what's in the word, they're going to be stubble. Like when you light up and you smoke, the little ashes that fall off, that's what they're going to be like. That's stubble. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Right. The day that coming shall burn them up. What else? And, it shall. and that's really, that's the hellfire is going to be here. Not under the earth. The Lord going to sit in the fire here. When we perish, our spirits go back to the Lord. We in peace. That's why they say rest in peace. Because you are there resting. All your relatives that passed away, they over there resting. They chilling. They ain't living down here in this world with us in pain. They with the Lord. They enjoy it. You think that whole World War III thing is a good thing? Oh, um, it's good for the planet because it's going to rid the earth of wickedness. And what you're talking about, you said it's perfect here. Well, it is in some respects. It's a perfect hell. It's, but it's going to be a perfect heaven. The kingdom of heaven. The Lord is going to come. He's going to make it perfect. What else? And he shall lead them. He will Right. Right. So now go to that first or uh, second we talked about, chapter 5. See, when the Savior, when he died on the cross, he did more than one thing. He brought his people back to the Lord because we would cast, you know, the Lord turned his back on, it, on his people. But when he brought, when he died on the cross, he procured a kingdom for himself and for us. A perfect world to come. It's just not here yet. That's why everything gets increasingly bad now. More and more and more, it's going to continue to get worse until the Lord gets fed up and finally say, okay, that's enough. Now World War III is going to break out and the missile is going to come here and burn this place. What happens if he doesn't? It's going to happen. There's no ill. It's going to happen. It's, it's written. It's going to happen. So if it doesn't happen, then we all going to perish. Because these people that are in charge, they're going to, they're going to try to get rid of it's all of them. It's going to happen anyway. The only reason it happened, the only reason it happened, happened is because it's important time. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, just as always, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory into Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakak Wadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kwadash, the Holy Tongue, for the one true name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy, whom the world ignorantly calls God, or Allah, which both of those words are titles simply meaning power. All right, it wasn't Jehovah, as the letter J didn't exist until the 16th century, the proper dialect which is referred to in Israel today as the dead language, as it's a dialect no longer used, as it is the original language, for the one true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of the Messiah whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus being Yahweh Shai. As it is written, there is no other name given among man whereby you must be saved. So wherever the elect are, man, they're going to find that name, and they're going to know who to call upon for salvation, man, who to call upon for help, who to call upon when all hell is breaking loose. You see, and how are they going to learn that name? By studying, man. All right, you see the guy in this video, or you hear the guy in this video, right, who really, uh, you know, he just lacks faith, man. And, you know, maybe the Heavenly Father will give it to him at one point, but, you know, he's asking questions like, you know, I just don't understand how, uh, how a God could create a planet and put evil people in it. You know, I don't understand. You know, and, and really all these answers are in the Scriptures, and that's why, you know, the Spirit has stirred up, brothers, to go out there and prophesy, man. Because our people have been lost, our people have been lied to, our people have been led into religions which have been set up to profit their own pockets, man. All right? Religion has taken these scriptures and manipulated them into the precepts of men, into what people break down, into what people believe, man. Let me go ahead and grab a quick uh, 
uh, uh, scripture. Because you find out real quick, a lot of these people that claim to believe in the scriptures, man, once we start actually pulling out the what, what's written, you find out they don't believe in what's written, man. They believe in their own narrative, their own breakdown of uh, which is suiting unto their own heart, man. All right, and Esau's given that. Esau's shortened the arms of the Most High to make these people uh, 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 be in this destroyed state, man. This is the book of uh, Matthew, chapter fifteen, and verse. Uh, Eight, it says, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, right? All these people talk about the Lord, right? A lot of these people have the Bibles within their households, right? With all that dust on it and what have you. They have pictures of that white Christ and whatnot upon their wall, right? Pictures of crosses. They wear crosses. They have tattoos of crosses, right? It says, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, you see? Their doctrines have become the commandments of men. That's why you see these churches doing things that have nothing to do with the scripture, man. And that's why at the end of the day, there's one way where you're going to find true wisdom, man. And that's ultimately by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and the Holy Spirit's going to drive you to do what, man? This is uh, 1 Maccabees. In fact, I, think, I believe it's the book of Sirach. Rock chapter 38, and uh, let's see where to start here, man. This is verse... Twenty-four, it says, "The wisdom of the lear of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure." You see that, man. So the wisdom is going to come by the opportunity of leisure, man. These people that that are atheists that don't believe, right? Ninety percent of these people, perhaps ninety-nine percent, right? This is my assumption from what I've what I've experienced when dealing with them is they have never even read the Bible, man. The book that they claim is irrelevant, they've never read, yet they've read all these other books and took them and accounted those for facts, right? You see, when you read this book, man, you're gonna find, <laughs> hey, you're gonna find a lot in there, man. And, you know, I'm a man of, uh, right, of uh, dealing with what is, man. Dealing with what's written, right? And what's written is prophecy, man. You see, what separates this book but behind all these other books out there, man, is the prophecies within it. You see, we go to the book of Daniel, going all the way back to the Babylonian Empire, man. The Grecians were being prophesied about. Alexander the Great was spoken of before he even came on the scene, man. Antiochus Epiphanes. Rome. America. NATO <laughs> thermonuclear destruction man what more do you need so you would think one with common sense would go and and actually study these things that are written I don't know why it took us back to Isaiah 29 uh, so rock 38 and verse 29 it said what uh, what was that verse 29 what verse was that 24 it says, the wisdom of a learned man cometh by the opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall become wise. You see, the way that you become wise is by what? Having little business within this world, man. By using your time of leisure to do what? To study. You see? But guess what, man? Esau has you in such a condition that you are constantly busy, constantly grinding, man. You see? All work and no play. So what do you have on your days off? What do you do on your days off? Hey, you see I pulled up bread and circuses. It says is a metonomic phrase referring to the superficial appeasement 
and you see the picture it says give them bread and circuses and they will never revolt so you've been given right particular uh, uh, particular comforts particular uh, uh, things to do with your opportunities of leisure man all right football right you've been given uh, uh, right particular things within the mainstream music industry right different forms of entertainment right drugs <laughs> the bottle right hey he's giving you all these different things to keep you distracted to keep you sidetracked man and meanwhile you have all the answers right before your face he set up all these religions right and now that now it's left you in a place of just complete and utter confusion man not knowing what not knowing what's down when it comes to what's written within these scriptures you see verse 25 it says how can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and glorieth in the gourd that driveth oxen and is occupied in their labors and whose talk is of bullocks right this is the book of Luke chapter 15 forgive me chapter 14 and uh Chapter 15 and verse, uh, forgive me, it is chapter 14. And verse uh, 18, it says, And they all with one consent begin to make an excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs to go see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. Right, so these people were too occupied within this world to invest their time and energy within the scriptures man so therefore naturally right they ain't gonna have no answers man they ain't gonna have no wisdom they pissed their 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 time their, of grace where they were supposed to be accumulating this wisdom they pissed it away man right and in this example right verse 18 the first said unto him i have bought a piece of ground so this man was too busy because he bought a new piece of land to invest within the word hey well that's fine you've received your constellation man it was this world, which is a shame because it was Esau's world. And look at how much great Esau had it than you, man. You were a perfect slave, you see? And he had you right where he wanted you, man. Confused. But that's why the Heavenly Father has stirred up what teachers to come out and to proclaim the truth, to, to give you, to, to map out that road, man, to allow the Spirit to come upon you. It says, I have bought, or, uh, Right, verse 19, it says, And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. In ancient times, if you were buying oxen, what was it for? Was it just so you could look upon them because you thought they were pretty? No, it's so you could start a, uh, you know, so you could start some sort of uh, uh, industry, man, for lack of a better word. You could start your own little uh, empire, right? You could start your own farming business. You see, so he got these oxen so they could help him produce his, uh, uh, you know his farm so that way he could get by day to day you see don't remember uh, 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 you know don't forget Yahweh Shai told the man who's who prayed to bury his father right to let the dead bury the dead man you see hey we we got the answers right here man all it takes is the time to invest within it and all you people man especially you atheist man you ain't even read the scriptures once which is why it's just comical to listen to you people li try to give out your opinion you over here giving an opinion about something you know nothing about, man. That's like going to a book reading and trying to tell people something about the book. You don't know nothing about it, man. You didn't read the book. You may have heard from a third party about the book and some details within it, and now you're trying to pretend like you know the whole damn book, man. <laughs> Verse 20, it says, hey, the Most High has people right exactly where he wants them, and they don't even realize it, man. It's crazy to see. And then another said, I have married a wife. Open. Here you go, man. And therefore, I cannot come. So this man, his woman got in his way. You know, hey, Paul said, he that has a wife be as though he has none. Why? Because we're studying, man. We're constantly in this book. A lot of these women out here, you know, and brothers know what I'm talking about, man, that you deal with, right? <coughs> hey, they, get, they, they have a power trip when it comes to these scriptures, man. 
right? Deep down inside, they feel some type of way because Esau has made them feel like, right, they need to be put first, happy wife, happy life. But the scriptures tell us there's an order, man. The Most High comes first, right? And so these women feel some type of way that the Most High is on a, on a, on a put, put on the pedestal rather than them. But this man wasn't having that. He loved his woman, right? So he went ahead and put her on the pedestal, and <laughs> hopefully she'll save you from the wrath to come, man. You see? Hey, again, the opportunity of leisure you were spending with your woman horseback riding when you could have been studying these scriptures, man. Right? This is why Yahweh Shai said, what? My, my, my yoke is, it, it, my burden is light, and my, uh, uh, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Because really, if you want to take your woman horseback riding, go ahead and go do that. But you put the most high first. You make sure that it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't get in the way with camp. It doesn't get in the way with with what we got going on in a spiritual sense, man. All right, don't get it twisted, man. These women have been given to you so that you could get through your walk within this ministry and maximize your potential within it, not the other way around, man. You see, <laughs> you haven't. You have a hey, call all you how by Shem was shy for this truth, man, and for being able to to you know, see the bigger picture, all right? Because a lot of these people, man, all they see is just what's right in front of them, man. Their wife, their yoke of oxen, right? They're them trying to get the bag out here in Babylon. Hey, and meanwhile, guess what? When it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to spiritual things, they're lost in the sauce, man. They're all over the map, not knowing what's up, what's, it, what's down. And now you know why, man because they didn't invest the time to study what's written. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and close it there. All praises, honor, and glory be in the Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Dash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Graham Millstone and a sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations unto all those of you hopeful and faithful members of the elect wherever you may be in these last days. Until next time, this is Brother Gar. I say Shalom. <laughs>